Welcome to this week's edition of Research Ethics. Today we're going to talk about research ethics in regard to data reporting, data collection, data processing. Biological and ag engineers collect a lot of research data now and our undercover cameras are going to go behind the scenes to look at three research ethical dilemmas. So come with us, let us show you these examples, and we'll also talk to some experts about what to really do in terms of research ethics. Hey Mike, how are you doing? Hey man. How's your research presentation going? Well, I'm kind of stuck right now. Uh, I've got my models not really fitting well to m several of the variables uh, that I measured it, like for so many days. Um, I have just no idea why. I'm kind of thinking about taking those out of my dissertation, you know, and just pretending like the, the model or the device didn't really work. Um, it's only like 5% of my data set, so I don't really think it's going to be a huge deal. And that's that's perfectly fine too, because 5% of your data set is nothing. I had kind of like a worse experience, I only had like a 6 data points and like two of them didn't fit well and I just, like and I thought my model is good, I just like adjusted uh, two data points and it uh, went well. I think, yeah, you're gonna be fine. Cool. Oh no, you cannot do that. This is data manipulation. You cannot just eliminate points to make your model looks better or to make your research more presentable for publication. Data manipulation and falsification is a severe breach of scientific ethics. It's a scientific misconduct. You just cannot do that. Hey Sam, how are you doing today? Mm, I'm doing well, thanks. How is your research going? It's going really great, actually. I just finished two manuscripts uh, mm -hmm. that are ready to be published, but when I was looking at reputable journals to publish in, they force you to upload your data to a public repository. Oh, really? That's unfair. Researchers spend years to collect this data, and then someone can get the full access to that just like that? Mm, I think in future, anyone can access any kind of data without the permission of the original authors. What do you think? That's right, yeah, but I think I found a way around the problem. Uh, so I went ahead and uploaded my data to the public repositories, mm -hmm. but I stripped it from the metadata and uh, any descriptors. So it's pretty much useless. Oh, that's great. So in this example, we can see that there was a lack of data transparency, which is a problem because we want to make sure that we're abiding by the rules of reproducible research. Reproducible research is important because it ensures that others can take our results and continue building upon them to advance science and engineering. I've got tenure coming in six months, and I got this. I need these three papers, but I just have that one data set. I think I know what I'm going to do. I mean, it's great data, there's lots of it. So, what I'm going to do is just going to split into two and publish, oh, submit in one journal, first half. Submit the second half in another journal at the same time, unrelated, you know, so it doesn't show up. And nobody will tell. After all, you know, it's great data. Um, it's going to make twice the impact. There's nothing wrong with that. I think I'll just do that. Well, I feel for that young professor. I understand he's trying to get tenure, but what he's doing is not ethical. If you're splitting data up for the sole purpose of just bumping up your publication numbers, that's a no-no. It dilutes the data. It makes it harder to access. He's making the wrong decision. Today, in this edition of Research Ethics, we saw three examples of what not to do uh, when handling and managing data. We hope you join us, though, next time because there's lots of other cases that we need to look at about how we can maintain the integrity uh, and the honesty in how we manage data in research. We'll see you next time.